There had long been pressure for votes for women. The National Union of Women's Suffrage Societies, led by Mrs. Fawcett, campaigned for the general improvement of women in education, employment and politics. But it was the suffragettes who gave votes for women a much higher profile and a much narrower focus. In 1903, Mrs. Emmeline Pankhurst raised the flag of revolt with her two daughters, Christabel and Sylvia. They called themselves the Women's Social and Political Union, later referred to as the suffragettes. Their problem was how to persuade an all-male parliament to give women the vote. Women are certainly intellectually inferior to men. They are nervous, emotional and have very little sense of proportion. Frustrated by the lack of progress, the suffragettes decided to take action. In 1905, Christabel Pankhurst and Annie Kenny were thrown out of a Liberal meeting for demanding votes for women. For simply disturbing the meeting, I would not be imprisoned. I must use the infallible means of getting arrested. I must insult the police. Even with all my limbs helpless, I could commit a technical assault. And so I found myself arrested and charged with spitting at a policeman. Next morning, we found that the long, long newspaper silence as to women's suffrage was broken. It was the first time in Britain that a woman had gone to prison for a political cause. The incident created a sensation which was immediately exploited in a campaign throughout the country. Christabel called for civil disobedience. Bad laws, made without due authority, ought not to be obeyed, but resisted by every honest man and woman. It is such laws that the militant suffragettes have broken. The suffragettes were determined to win public support by keeping votes for women in the headlines. At the end of 1906, the Daily Mirror commented, When the suffragettes began their campaign, they were mistaken for notoriety hunters, featherheads, flibberty gibbets. Their proceedings were not taken seriously. Now they have proved that they are in dead earnest, they have frightened the government, they have broken through the law, they have made votes for women, practical politics. More and more suffragettes were being imprisoned for their actions. They demanded to be treated as political prisoners, not criminals, and went on hunger strike. Under orders from the Home Secretary, the medical officers began force feeding. On Saturday afternoon, I experienced the horror of force feeding for the first time. The wardresses forced me onto the bed and held me whilst a doctor tried to prise open my mouth. When that failed, the doctor forced a tube down my nostril into my stomach. Great pain is experienced during the process. The drums of the ear seem to be bursting, a horrible pain in the throat and the chest. The after effects are a feeling of faintness, a sense of great pain in the chest, the nose and ears. On November the 18th, 1910, as Prime Minister Asquith was talking to the House, 300 women marched on Parliament. This time, the police behaved with a brutality not experienced by the women before. The day became known as Black Friday. Some of the language used by the policemen was beyond description. One gripped me by the thigh and I demanded that he should cease doing such a hateful action to a woman. He said, listen dear, I can grip you wherever I like today. The police deliberately tore my undergarments using the most foul language. They seized me by the hair and forced me up the steps on my knees. I was flung into the crowd outside.
faced with obstinacy in Parliament and violence outside, Mrs. Pankhurst asked the members of the WSPU... Why should women go to Parliament Square and be battered about and insulted, and most important of all, produce less effect than when they throw stones? There is something the government care far more for than human life, and that is the security of property. And so it is through property that we shall strike the enemy. Then on June 3rd, 1913, Emily Wilding Davison threw herself under the King's horse. Her funeral was attended by 2,000 suffragettes. The cabinet and press responded with dismay. A deed of this kind, we need hardly say, is not likely to increase the popularity of any cause with the ordinary public. Reckless fanaticism is not regarded by them as a qualification for the vote. There can be no doubt that yesterday's exhibition will do more harm than good to the cause of women's suffrage. The suffragettes were really the first terrorists. Their campaign of violence helped to keep the issue of votes for women on the political scene at a time when it was in danger of being eclipsed by other issues like Irish home rule. But the campaign also hindered the movement, the scenes of women chaining themselves to railings, being hauled off to prison, served to embarrass many of the supporters of uh, women's suffrage. It also split the movement. Many of the moderates felt that this was not the way to proceed, that it might be proving the critics of women right, that women were too unstable and emotional to participate in politics. Moreover, many women were in the movement for social and health reform issues, in which the vote was only one of the issues for which they were fighting. And they too found the campaign of the militant suffragettes something of a distraction. <laughs> 